Sarasota, Florida, the future and 2030. We have had a ton of changes over the last few years, but at the same time, what are we really also in for the next decade or so? You know, the demographics and what's gonna happen really just overall culturally with that, the real estate, the housing, the pricing, things to do, and just the overall vibe. That's what I wanna break down today. My name is Adam Hancock. You have arrived at the Florida Relocation Guide, your smartest way to buy, sell, and or invest in the entire state of Florida. Without further ado, let's hop in. Okay, I have a few different things I wanna call out, and the first of those being end-to-end master plan suburb environment. So clunky to say, but very meaningful and impact. One of the most special things about the Sarasota General Metro, which involves both Sarasota and Manatee counties, is you have a relatively tiny beach-based area in the grand scheme of things that has an unbelievable and unusual master plan new construction environment. And currently, and also historically, you have two major players in that conversation. One is the big sexy one in the room, Lakewood Ranch, Florida. It's northeast of the main part of town. It is the number one multi-gen master plan in the United States. It is large, it's beautiful, all of it's new, tons and tons and tons of communities, amenities, and the like. It's everything it looks like online and more. And then you have a couple spotty ones in between on your ways down south to an area called South Venice, Florida, which is really South Venice, still in Sarasota County, but Western Northport. And it is smaller, it's newer, and it's more coastal. And that's what it's been, that's what it is. And that second option is very, very fresh. Where we're going in the next 10 to 50 years, really, is we're gonna fill in the middle, which hasn't been done properly. And that's why it's been spotty in between. So you have one up here, you have one down here, and the juxtaposition people do when they come and shop is they are making that choice. Now it's polarity, which helps, right? It's binary, it's this or that, and they all have goods and bads. But a lot of people wanna be in the middle of those value propositions because it is so polar. So with the advent of central Sarasota, so think parallel to Siesta Key Beach, the center of Sarasota exits 205, 207 on the interstate, and right along the interstate border, that area, there is a very large swath of land, which includes part of this conversation, called High Hat Ranch. And what they're basically going to do is, right now you have, you know, artistry that was built by Coulter Homes, you have Cardell in there, Worthington was built across the street, you have Sky Ranch, which is a big Taylor Morrison outfit, some mixed building in between there as well. Uh, Grand Park, a little bit south of that. Palmer Ranch flanks the old school suburb that sits in South Sarasota. I'll try to show on a map here while I'm discussing this. But the plan for this Hi-Hat Ranch area, because of the way they can acquire the land, or at least the plan for acquiring the land, and the way they can kind of go into these areas and intentionally try to do a lot of things on a plan of, we do this now, we do this next, we do this later, which is this what makes master plans special, is its intentionality, and it's them knowing, a long time in advance where they're gonna go with it. So the roads are smarter, the amenities are smarter, they do things in the correct order. That's why Lakewood Ranch feels like it does because it's not, it wasn't Westy Chapel, it's, it's not as random. It's, it's the ownership of that land was like one family basically. So they were able to control a lot of the things. That's where they're really going with that. And this video is not about this specifically, so I'll kind of be brief as I end here. But where we're going if you have a uh, master plan in all the parts of town, and they continue to make Lakewood further and Parrish becomes popular as an offshoot of Lakewood. And then Welland Park expands and expands into Englewood and expands closer to the island. And you still have a, you have a bigger version of what they currently have there. But then you, you go right in the middle and you give a equally cool offering is now when you come to town, you can pick where you want to be and what you want your life to be and probably have a really good chance of navigating a similar kind of house in any environment. The difference between what's happening now versus what's gonna be when that's mature is a lot of people say, I want this, this is perfect, and they end up, plan A doesn't work because the housing, the price, the criteria, something's weird. Plan B, not quite right, they end up with plan C because there's not enough variety in what they want lifestyle-wise, so a lot of times the house dictates the lifestyle versus having the dream of everything in between. So if that makes sense, that's what I think the master plan variety and stretch of geography is going to do to the town. And that's my number one, let's hop to number two. Okay, the second one I wanted to discuss, I'm calling South County carves out a name for itself. And right now, when most people that I speak to are seeking out our lovely area here, they're really honed in on Sarasota. And maybe they find out about newer suburbs because 
it's homes that they prefer close to things they want to be close to, and they just kind of bleed into those areas. Or they really just are honed in on Lakewood Ranch, Florida itself. It is now these days in 2024, it's a town of its own. Most places in Lakewood Ranch, you can interchange the word Lakewood Ranch for Bradenton or Sarasota in your address. 10,000 plus Google searches a month for just one area within a larger metro. And then even Waterside, which is one district within Lakewood Ranch, within the Sarasota metro, people look at individually like it's its own thing. And then you have this other area below the Sarasota city limits that's basically a combination of four towns within Sarasota County. So you go below southern Sarasota city limits, which is Palmer Ranch in essence, and you have Osprey, Nokomis, Venice itself, and then Englewood. And then to the east of all of that is Northport. Well, it's still viewed, in my opinion, a little bit as just an offshoot. Uh, most people get there by trying to figure out something else first, and then some sort of loose discovery. They end up in this area, and then a lot of times it's specific criteria or maybe a school that makes them stay there. Well, and Park has helped with that conversation. But all that to say, it's still very discombobulated. You get down there. Well, and Park is a new master plan community that's nine to 11 neighborhoods. The pitch is, you know, it's significantly closer to the beach holistically. Um, it's a little bit more affordable on average right now. It's, it's new, it's sexy, it has a downtown. It's got all that going for it, right? So Venice really gets on the map even harder because people see that on the internet and they go to where that's at. But when they get down there, a lot of times it feels a little odd because what the area I just described basically is, is you go below Sarasota and it's kind of random nothingness. Osprey and Nokomis feels almost like drive-through towns. You don't really know what you're looking at. Um, it feels a little random. And then you have Venice itself and centered around downtown Venice. So the downtown historic Venice area is also the, the coastal part. Because what Venice has is it doesn't have a barrier island. You know, Siesta Key, Anna Maria Island, Longboat Key, they're all barrier islands. So you go beach, you know, mainland, bridge, beach. So it feels more disconnected. Well, when you get down to Venice, there's no barrier island. So if you're anywhere near that downtown, one, you can walk to the beach almost um, probably the entire downtown, but it also feels much more coastal, just that whole area, because there's not this big separation. It feels breezy. It feels laid back, quaint, coastal, almost like a lot of parts of the Panhandle. And then you go below that and very, very southern Venice, almost northern Englewood, you have the Welland Park District. So they slap you just roll upon this area of a bunch of new neighborhoods and this new downtown, but it really feels like you literally just rolled upon it. So because of that, a lot of times Lakewood Ranch is just easier because they built an entire city. So every part you go to seems like it makes sense. You can compartmentalize what you where you want to live versus the rest of the town. It's a lot more integrated. Well, where we're going with this thing, and the plan is already in place, the writing's all, all on the wall, is that it's going to connect. So one, they're, one of the areas they're working the hardest on right now is the area right below Southern Sarasota, but right above downtown Venice, which is that random area, Nokomis Osprey. They are building a ton of new construction. Neil's in there. David Weekly's in there. Uh, M.I. Holmes is in there. Madame's in there. They're all in there. Davosta. So there's going to be a layer of living above downtown Venice, but below Sarasota, which gives you a little bit of the best of both worlds. You're a little closer to Siesta Key and Casey Key, but also Venice is below you. So that gives you that not so far as well in conversation. And then you have downtown Venice in the middle. And then Welland Park is going to go 20, 30, 40 more years. So when all of that connects, then you put on top of that all the commercial amenities that are going to start coming down there, which is missing now. You're going to have the larger big box stores. You're going to have the cooler restaurants, which are already coming. So you're going to have the entertainment and you know just grocery and all that need satiated. And then what you have on top of that, you already have the fantastic schools. Venice schools were always amazing. Sarasota County for the first time ever was ranked number one school district in the entire state of Florida, 68 school districts. It just ranked above the St. Augustine area in St. John's County for the first time that I've ever seen since I've been looking at these numbers. So you already had all that going. So when all of this shakes out, it's no longer, in my opinion, and I think it's even gonna be aggressively, it's gonna ramp like crazy. It's no longer gonna be, in my opinion, Sarasota, and then what else is there? This is going to stand alone like people seek out St. Petersburg versus Tampa. The people that seek out St. Pete are looking at St. Pete. They're not looking at Tampa Bay and saying, where could I live a lot of times? They're going to St. Pete. I think even more so, there's a lot more similarities to what Venice is to, to Naples versus like a St. Pete. This is going to be a place that it has the size, the scale, the construction, where you could choose Sarasota, you could choose Lakewood Ranch, 
or you could choose the Venice General Metro, and it's not going to all be viewed as Googling Sarasota. So if that makes any sense at all, I really, really think that's going to happen. I've been harping that like crazy. This place, the entire town is 18 or 20 minutes less than that to the beach. Uh, you have the only dog beach in the town, the county. You have the only dog beach in both counties combined. You have the Shark's Tooth Capital of the World with Casperson. Venice Beach is lovely. It's like a more laid back, maybe siesta key of sorts. And then all of that entire conversation is 45 minutes from everything that Sarasota offers and also an hour and a half or less to everything that Naples offers as well. So uh, it's gonna be really, really interesting going forward. Number three, Sarasota, Florida continues to get more youthful. So a bit of a demographic topic here, but if you're honest with yourself, if you think of youth, just a younger population in general, Sarasota, Florida is probably not the first term that pops in your head. I'll be at the last couple of years, we have been trending in this direction for sure. Um, just overall a little bit younger, a lot of changes going on. But I think there's a couple main categories that are gonna continue this trend on pretty specifically and intentionally. And it's gonna change both our demographic culturally and diversity in general, and also age-wise for the good. One of those being home options. We are no longer just gonna build 2,400 to 2,900 square foot single story homes that are three bedroom, two and a half with a den, screen and pool patio. The perfect empty nester, perfect dream retirement home works for other things as well, of course, but that's really what it's centered at. You know, and if a town has been primarily based on play first, work second for so long, then, and the homes are already built, then most of the homes sit in that area. Most of these neighborhoods look exactly the same, like even the historic ones, or they're sitting in the villas or some pared down version of what people need if your average age is 65 to 69. So new construction popping in so heavily is what is able to change this with a path of least resistance because they can build it brand new. And they're really trying to cover that end-to-end -end cycle. And they're doing it in a few ways. One, what if you have four kids and you're like 30 years old? And what, what satiates those needs, right? Because not everybody has $3 million to live in that kind of home, but you know, a three bedroom, two and a half bath probably doesn't work. You need en suites, you need play area, loft rooms. You might want a two story um, so that you don't lose your full backyard by being super, super, super wide and deep. You might need all of that, but as some sort of general affordability. Well, Lennar and DR Horton and Ryan Holmes and you know, a few different guys maybe satiate those needs. Another category is what, it, what about that starter kind of townhome? Uh, what about that one around a walkability district? Uh, either young couple or single or, you know, just something where it's not the perfect, it's a different life stage, right? Like there's all these different categories that could fit. Well, you have like the water sides of the world with Nautique or Avanti. You have uh, Well and Park stationing those needs. You're going to have stuff in the middle with like Sky Ranch with Taylor Morrison. North Venice has a bunch with Taylor Morrison as well. So they're really trying to push into that. They're putting affordability restrictions on a lot of stuff, homestead restrictions, and stuff which would uh, would alter the control of it all being one population. That's one. Number two, schools. I mentioned number one school district um, in the United States, or in the state of Florida, sorry. <laughs> in the state of Florida, out of 68 districts is Sarasota County, which most of the Lakewood Ranch schools that people seek out aren't even in that conversation because that's Manatee. And that's always renowned for schools. So you have a lot of really good public schools already. But the additional schools and what they're going to be, I think, adds to that conversation even more. You know, you bring in all this population, you need new schools. So Lower Lakewood Ranch is going to add a bunch there because the Sarasota County part of Lakewood has been an issue because it didn't already have that infrastructure and it takes a little bit of time. Mid Lakewood Ranch is adding to uh, decrease the overpopulation of schools. Central Sarasota, you're getting additional schools there, like, and they're gonna do some K to eights and stuff where you can, kids can be in the same school for longer. ODA, uh, the Outdoor Academy, is offering another lower school I've heard going to Central Sarasota because the only one's in Siesta Key right now. You know, Venice is adding. So you're gonna have a lot more abundant options. And then also a lot of the new schools, they come real heavy with STEM programs and just innovation that maybe didn't exist prior. So STEM programs, you have Montessori all over the place, you have public charters, and it's a little easier versus when I grew up to find that one where, you know, now I have two kids under seven and, you know, I'm seeking these specific kind of things and you know, maybe you don't want to be private, but maybe you want specialty. And if, the, if you don't have variety around that, you're just really pigeonholed and a lot of people can't live in Sarasota for that reason. That's also gonna secretly attract, not secretly, but that's also gonna sneakily attract talent. You need teachers, you need that whole thing, which a lot of times that's gonna bring a younger demographic as well. Third, 
It's kind of just a random one. But in my opinion, a lot of the folks, my, I'm 37, a lot of the folks around my age with the changes in work culture and what you're able to physically do now can move back to Sarasota, like to be closer to family. And that's how I ended up back. Um, but if you're not moving back into a family business, which is a heavy, heavy majority of everyone I grew up with, then a lot of times it's hard to be, you know, under 30 or under 35 with a young family and afford to live and work in Sarasota if your workplace is based in Sarasota because there's just not an abundant infrastructure right now. But with the work from home and the flexible workspaces and all that kind of thing, now there's multiple co-working spaces in Sarasota. There's a lot more innovation, a lot more entrepreneurship. Then it is a lot more feasible to, uh, you know, move back. And my demographic um, adds a lot, a lot of youth because it's like kind of the age where it's not too young. Maybe it can afford it a little bit more, but a lot of times still have young kids. So I've seen that a ton. Beyond that, you have the hospital infrastructure. So Sarasota Memorial's expanded south to um, North Venice. Um, they're pushing real hard in Northport. And a lot, a lot of the staffing needed at the hospital is going to add youth. A lot of the housing surrounding that Southern County conversation is to satiate the hospital staff needs. You know, first responder push, all of that kind of thing. So I think that there's a lot of things that will make this uh, the staying power of the youthful trend um, more sustainable than it just being random and young people being like, I can work from home. I'm just going to move there. It's not random. It's intentional. And I think um, that's going to be the future here, especially in the next decade or so. All right, number four, I'm calling insulated condo communities. So whether you're a fan of condominium living or not, you could acknowledge that Sarasota, Florida is a pretty unbelievable area to this kind of development. You know, you throw 149 people directly vertical in a new development that can all experience the same geography and lifestyle that maybe three to four single family homes could have done in the same footprint. At least there's a line of sight to say, commercially, that they want that to be viable, right? Well, we've always had that. And historically, you could do two main things. Downtown, urban, walkability, live in the downtown district, which there's a ton of resale buildings there. Um, or you could go to the beaches. I'm moving to Sarasota. I want water. I want private beach access. I want to buy my way to boat moorings and that kind of thing. So typically, people have done one of the two. Well, the last couple of years and where I see it going, they've carved out this like sneaky other thing. This third option, which are these little almost condominium neighborhoods of sorts that in a in my mind, in like a pseudo way, they satiate what a lot of the suburban neighborhoods do. So you go to Lakewood Ranch, right? You pick your individual home that you want that fits you within your individual neighborhood, within individual amenities for that neighborhood. And then when you leave that, people these days are seeking communal amenities. What is the general area around my neighborhood where all my neighbors are in different neighborhoods, what can we come together and experience? And what does it have to offer? And that, that's the idea of master plan. Well, they're doing the same with condominiums, right? So you choose your condominium building, which is your neighborhood, individual unit, which for condos is way more specific, right? So individual criteria, right? And then when you leave that, what does that district have to offer? And there's three main districts, which I'm not going to get crazy on this video, but to juxtapose, which show you what I mean, that give the town just more variety. It gives you, if you're not a suburb person, you don't want a single family home, but you don't want a luxury high rise, it doesn't have to be one or the other any longer. And there's some cool ways they're doing it. So one is a little bit more traditional. You could say, I'm moving to Sarasota. I want everything. I want everything it has to offer that the minds of the people deem important. Uh, I want to be near downtown. I want to be water-based, but I don't want to commit to being all the way on the Barrier Island and like Siesta Key. That's a real commitment, right? I want to be in between. Well, there's a district called the Quay that satiates that perfectly. 14-acre waterfront mixed-use development that is a stone's throw in front of downtown, but is bay-facing and beach-adjacent. So you're in Lido Beach in five minutes. You are, I mean, you could basically fall off of the Quay onto the Ben Franklin Bridge to Lido. Right behind you is downtown, so it doesn't get too far to whack in any direction, and it faces the bay. So a lot of the condominiums have views, but just as coastal in general, right? Marina Jack's right there. Unbelievable location. So you have a little bit of everything you need. You have multiple new construction condominium buildings at different price points. You have the Beso, uh, which was uh, you know sold about a year ago. You have the Ritz-Carlton, the newest Ritz-Carlton building, uh, which Coulter is heading up. You have One Park, which is an unbelievable offering. You have boutique offerings. You have a high-rise rental luxury apartment that Lennar is heading up. There's going to be more and more and more to that, and it's all uh, west of the trail. So that's really interesting. The Bay Project, you can look that up. It offers a bunch of, you know, there's an amphitheater. You know, the Van Wezel over there. There's public parks, and there's a lot coming there. So that gives you that, like, this mirage of Sarasota Paradise in a pretty unique way. 
So if you go the opposite of that, there's a, there's a district called the rosemary, which is my number two. This is the newest one that's kind of happening. So historically, the rosemary has been tricky because, you know, like any downtown, you have the heart of what people deem like the ideal. You know, this for ours, it's Maine and lemon and orange and um, palm. And these, this is the heart of where all the stuff is in downtown Sarasota. But then if you get a little bit further from that, like a little bit less walkable, a little bit choppier because it's not as mature. You have people like any downtown that have lived there forever. They're trying to develop in between it. And if you could pick the main area, this would be like the junior version. Well, for us, that's Rosemary. So you get a little bit across the street and you get to this area that's a lot more eclectic. Um, it's kind of hip in you know a weird way. But that's what they're really focusing on now. So they're going to go way more boutique. And I think this is really the future of it. You're going to go east to Tamiami Trail. So you get a little bit further from the water. And you get urban, but in a more boutique way. So they're going to build, I think all of the buildings are going to be like 10 units to maybe 60. There's a brand new building called the Gallery right now, which is one of the most interesting value propositions in all of Southwest Florida, in my personal opinion right now. Just there's nothing like it that satiates those needs. Good blend of the amount of the units versus the price point versus the fees and the location. They have hotels like the Sarasota Modern over there. There's a brew pub over there. That one's going to be really, really interesting. And it gives a lot more eclectic alternative to the world of luxury condominiums. So that's another one, Rosemary District. And a third one, uh, just an example. So you have this another area called uh, Golden Gate Point. And Golden Gate Point, people view as like the view of Sarasota. This place is literally, I mean, it's a peninsula. So it's surrounded on water on three sides. But if you look at the view off of it, which we'll show here, it's the best of everything. But this area is basically like one cul-de-sac neighborhood. So it's a lot more boutique version of what the quay is going to be and a lot more restricted. So Sarasota, Florida has an 18 story limit on height of condominium buildings. And that's a Sarasota, Florida specific thing, because what that will do is it won't make it look like Manhattan. You know, St. Pete doesn't have that limit. Miami doesn't have that limit. They'll put 400 units in one building. The most we could squeeze in, I think technically is about 149. But a lot of them go less than that. You know, like the Ritz will do 73. One park will be, do 122. And you see a lot of 60s and 70s and 80s. Um, well, Golden Gate Point has a 10-story limit. So they have like their own limit within a limit. So it's going to be even less so. And if it literally feels like you're doing one roundabout. But within that conversation of all of that, what it's always been, like a lot of privately owned stuff on the fringes, there's four active building luxury condominium buildings right now. You have 688, which is right on the road there. You have um, Evolution, which is in the middle. Um, you have the Owen, and you have uh, the Peninsula. Um, and they're all a little bit more boutique. They're all a little different from each other. But you can see kind of like all of the areas I just described are less than five minutes from each other. And that doesn't include downtown or the historic stuff. So I think that that is a really interesting conversation personally, as I've experienced. I think the economics are making a hell of a lot more sense than they made in the past as far as condominiums, which I've never said are financially advantageous for the most part. Um, so just food for thought. All right, let me hit you with just a couple more and then I'll let you guys go. Number five is the revitalization of the downtown core. So say downtown Sarasota is your apex and you wanna be close to it, but it doesn't quite work, whether that's investment or personal homestead, there's two major directions I would head in. Uh, that are going to be a lot more interesting within the next decade than they've been in the past. And the first one is the big enigma. Leave downtown, go north three, four, five miles towards the SRQ airport. Unbelievable on a map, very close to downtown still, right? Doesn't take you that long. Geography looks amazing, very coastal, but uh, people don't know how to look at it. You know, you have the Ringling School up there and you have all the Ringling stuff. You have new college, old businesses mixed in. It's The housing's old, but not in a charming way like, you know, Burns Court and Laurel and down in downtown Sarasota. Um, you have Sapphire Shores and Indian Beach, which look amazing, but you know, you're like, how do I look at this thing, right? Well, a lot of that land is owned by Ringling. New College is going to get a lot of things put into that, and the airport controls a lot of what happens down there. I think they're going to figure that place out. I would 100% have it on my radar. I'd be tracking that, and that area, again, is very, very close to what everyone in the world deems important, especially as they continue to push in north with Rosemary and the Quay and all that. So. Um, uh, food for thought. Secondly, I would go south. You know, a lot of these old school areas that were either never on your list or dropped off your list, i.e. like a golf gate, are in a better geography than a lot of the new stuff because they were already there. So it's more coastal. It's really close to Siesta Key. It's more mature. Going south gives you a lot more suburban old school neighborhoods versus going north gives you urban. And, 
you know, they're going to continue to develop and push into these areas where in the past you might have went down there and there you have Golfgate Village and it's eclectic. You have some, you have the Dead Mall with Sarasota Square, which was like the in vogue mall when I was growing up. And you have this, this, this antiquated stuff of what Sarasota used to be. Well, um, it's not going to stay like that for long, right? If, if Venice becomes awesome and central Sarasota becomes like what Hi Hat Ranch is going to build, what do you think is going to happen to the areas that were already in a better geography? So those are two I would um, put back on my list, at least from, uh, very least from an investment standpoint, but secondary to a future um, sneaky value standpoint. Okay, number six, home prices will calm down and remain calm in my opinion. We had a couple years obviously from 2020 to 2023 that were so crazy that I think it skewed what people think Sarasota always has been, which isn't the case. Now, notably so, it was so aggressive, it imprints something on your mind. But to say we were increasing at any percentage near what those years um, entailed is not true. So if you look at the data over the last 10 years, you know, you take 2014 to 2023, you know, we're sitting at like a $200,000 median cost across all of Sarasota's metro, Sarasota, Manatee County, right? And then we creep to 220 next year. We're at 240, 252, 260. So what we're doing on average is we're creeping for the most part at a three and a half, 4.2% year over year increase, right? So we get to 2020 and we're sitting at $293,000 median cost, believe it or not. Well, 2020 and 2021, we go year over year, 22.6% median sales cost. $360,000. So it resets the foundation. Well, then again, in 21 to 22, we go another 23.6%, like record high increases. So now we have a new foundation at $445,000. But from 2020 to 2023, almost a flat year over year increase. Like the previous 10 years, we never had a small of an increase. Like it was, everything was higher. So it was 0.2% from 22 to 23. So what I think we did is I think we artificially, which I've said this a lot in other videos, we've artificially boosted what the median cost would be, but I think we did set a new foundation. I don't think anything can make it go the other way, but I think we're going to hold steady now. So that $445,000, almost $446,000 median sales cost across both counties, right? Lots in play there. We'll probably get to a one, two, three percent year over year gain for quite a while. So all that will allow you to do, whether that is fun to hear or not, all it will allow you to do is allow you to predict something. And that's what we need. We need to know if I'm making a call and I'm seeking out buying between now and the next seven to 10 years, how different will it be then than it is now, which is in essence the point of this entire video. So I do think we will sit under that $500,000 median cost in my personal opinion um, for the next few years. So there's that. Okay, my seventh and final one, I'm just calling well-rounded commercial amenity offering. So on one side, many folks may deem all these changes as straight negative. You know, all these people moving into my area that I love from different states and political environments, you have all this new housing all of a sudden, tons of condominiums popping up, and there's pros and cons to all of that, of course. But on the other side, you have to build a lot of commercial offerings in order to satiate a population that maybe isn't there yet, but is coming. And the confidence developers take, the data they use, is a lot based on the future of what that's going to be because these things take time to build. So in essence, Sarasota is going to get a lot more going for it when it comes to shopping, restaurants, entertainment in general, kid-friendly activities, and a lot of areas that we haven't really had a good variety of in the past, just for the simple fact of all these people are coming in and they're trying to figure out what to do with that, right? And the areas it's happening in that are notable are Fruitville Commons, um, that is right before you get to Lakewood. The Center Point District that's on University um, is interesting. Downtown Waterside Place is really interesting. Downtown Lakewood Ranch is expanding and they're going north there as well. University of Town Center with the Bendersons development is going wild. Downtown Wellen, a lot of the things I'm mentioning did not exist five years ago at all. We're talking multiple downtowns, multiple restaurant areas. Um, and then North Dakomas and South Sarasota, the Hi-Hat Ranch area, these are just uncharted. So there's going to be a lot more going for it in general that may be parts of a St. Pete or parts of a Fort Myers or a Tampa offered that um, I think is going to be cool to see come to the town. So that's my seventh and final one. And give me a minute here and we'll wrap up. All right, that is a wrap on today's video on the Florida Relocation Guide. Really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. This is a great subscription if you're trying to navigate the whole world of Florida real estate, especially when it comes to relocation, new construction, or even the economics of how that all fits together. Another good thing to do from here 
is my website, the Sunshine State Co., and we have links in the description and everywhere here. We have uh, additional resources. So build a bunch of flipbook downloadable, like real consumable guides. Um, so we have a Sarasota specific, Tampa Bay, we're updating Naples. We have new construction specific as well. So check that out. We have a newsletter that we try to add a more real time kind of stream of consciousness data. So try to take advantage as much of that as possible. Of course, if a conversation makes sense at this point, you can text, you can call, you can email, you can shoot us a note on the website. I own a full scale brokerage called the Sunshine State Company. My name is Adam Hancock. I really appreciate you guys taking some time out of your day to uh, watch today's video and we'll see you on the next one.